Hello from ChemHelp ASAP. This video is a review of the various common oxidizing agents that students encounter during a typical two-semester sequence of Organic Chemistry 1 and Organic Chemistry 2. The list covered in this video is not comprehensive, but it should cover most oxidations in most courses. Of course, your instructor may include additional reactions that are not discussed in this video. If I left out one of your favorite oxidations, let me know in the comments section. If I get multiple suggestions, I'll make a follow-up video. Note that this video does not give full details on each oxidation reaction. I just want to put all these reactions into the context of oxidation chemistry. Let's begin by discussing how you can easily identify an oxidation reaction. First, we are focused on carbon atoms, so look closely at your carbons. If a carbon gains additional bonds to oxygen or another electronegative atom, such as nitrogen or one of the halogens, then the reaction is likely an oxidation. If a carbon loses bonds to hydrogen or often carbon, then the reaction is also likely an oxidation. There are formal ways to assign oxidation states to carbon atoms, but this video is not about assigning oxidation states. I just want to give these general quick tips before discussing reactions. The most common oxidations are oxidations of alcohols. In these reactions, an alcohol is converted into a carbonyl compound. I tend to divide these oxidations into three groups. The first is the oxidation of primary alcohols to aldehydes. Here we have a primary alcohol and it is forming an aldehyde. Let's draw in the key hydrogens for the alcohol. Note that during the reaction the key carbon both gains a bond to an oxygen and loses a CH bond. This is a definite oxidation. Many reagents can perform this reaction. The most common conditions seen in most texts and classes include either PCC, pyridinium chlorochromate, or the Swern oxidation. The Swern involves a cocktail of different reagents, and most people just write Swern over the arrow. The second group for alcohol oxidations again starts with a primary alcohol, but the product is a carboxylic acid. This reaction is actually two oxidations. To get the carboxylic acid, the alcohol is first converted to the aldehyde, which is then again oxidized to the carboxylic acid. The Jones oxidation, which involves chromium trioxide and acid, performs this oxidation. The third and final group is the oxidation of secondary alcohols to ketones. Any of the previous reagents, PCC, Swern, or Jones can accomplish this reaction. After the alcohol oxidations, oxidations involving alkene reactions are probably the next most common. All the reactions on the screen are addition reactions and most are encountered in first semester organic. In the upper left we have the dihalogenation reactions. I show the diiodination here but our discussion applies to bromine and chlorine as well. Both carbons of the alkene are losing a CC bond and gaining a bond to an electronegative halogen. Below is the hydrohalogenation, in this case featuring NBS, and bromosacinamide in water. Again, we are adding two electronegative atoms to the alkene. In the upper right is an epoxidation with a peroxy acid. In the lower right is a dihydroxylation with osmium tetroxide. All these reactions are oxidations. The previous alkene additions were oxidations. How about this one, the addition of HBr? I have labeled the carbons of the alkene A and B. Carbon A loses a CC bond and gains a CBr bond. Therefore, carbon A has been oxidized. Carbon B loses a CC bond and gains a CH bond. That's actually a reduction. So that's no, that is a reduction. So what is this overall reaction, an oxidation or reduction? Well, it's neither. So again, 
carbon A is oxidized, carbon B is reduced, and overall the net process for the molecule is neither. Not every reaction has to be categorized as an oxidation or a reduction. So, not all additions are oxidations. The ozonolysis is a reaction that involves complete cleavage of a CC double bond, both the pi and sigma bonds, to give two new carbonyl compounds. Ozone, O3, is the reagent that cleaves the alkene. There are two forms of the ozonolysis and they differ in the reagents that are used at the end of the reaction. On top, we have the ozonolysis with a reductive workup. And the second step after ozone is a reduction. Many different reagents can be used in this reduction step. Zinc and acetic acid, dimethyl sulfide, triphenylphosphine, etc. The resulting products will be either ketones or aldehydes and the identity of the products depends on the degree of substitution of the two sides of the alkene. Now this might seem odd, this video is about oxidations, but I'm presenting a reaction with a reductive workup. Well the first step, the ozonolysis, is an extensive oxidation and the reductive workup does not undo the oxidation in the first step. Okay, on the bottom we have the ozonolysis with an oxidative workup. The workup conditions normally involve hydrogen peroxide. The products of the ozonolysis with the oxidative workup are either ketones or carboxylic acids. Again, the identity of the products depends on the degree of substitution of the alkene. There are other methods to oxidatively cleave an alkene. The top reaction is a two-step process. First, oxidize an alkene to a diol with osmium tetroxide, a reaction we saw on an earlier slide, and then cleave the diol with pyridate. The products of this reaction depend on the substitution of the alkene, but are the same as the ozonolysis with a reductive workup. That's either ketones, and or aldehydes. The bottom is a one-step process performed with potassium permanganate. The products, ketones and or carboxylic acids, are the same as the ozonolysis with an oxidative workup. Permanganate is a very strong oxidant. In addition to cleaving alkenes, permanganate can oxidize alkyl chains on a benzene ring. A common example of this reaction is the oxidation of a methyl group on a benzene to give a carboxylic acid. You do not need methyl, however. Permanganate is so strong that it will oxidize an alkyl chain. Permanganate will remove the entire chain and leave behind just one carbon for the carboxylic acid. Another manganese oxidant is manganese dioxide. Manganese dioxide is not as reactive as permanganate. Manganese dioxide can oxidize alcohols that are next to a CC pi bond. In this top reaction, you can see that the alcohol carbon is right next to a pi bond. This is called a benzylic alcohol and it is readily oxidized to an aldehyde. The lower reaction also has a pi bond next to an alcohol. Since the pi bond is not part of a benzene ring, this is called an allylic alcohol. Again, the product is an aldehyde. Here is another reaction that qualifies as an oxidation. This reaction the radical halogenation is often the first reaction that students learn in organic chemistry. In this reaction, a CH bond is broken and replaced with a C halogen bond. This reaction is likely presented as a substitution, but some substitution reactions are also oxidation reactions. 
The electrophilic aromatic substitutions are another reaction that is presented as a substitution and yet is often an oxidation. Nitration of an aromatic ring involves replacement of a CH bond with a CN bond. This is an oxidation. Ring halogenations are also oxidations because electronegative atoms are being introduced onto the ring. Organic chemistry has many other oxidations. Reactions that sometimes get less attention as oxidations include the oxidative second half of the hydroboration oxidation. This sequence is the standard process for making anti Markovnikov alcohols. The alpha halogenation of ketones through reaction of an enol intermediate involves the loss of a CH bond and introduction of an electronegative halogen. This is also an oxidation. There are certainly other oxidation reactions. If you'd like to see another video that reviews less common oxidation reactions, please leave a comment about the specific reaction you would like to see. That was a short review of common oxidation reactions that students often see in Organic 1 and 2. Please leave a comment, leave a like, or subscribe to the channel. Take care.